Good morning. What's wrong with Babylon? Our reading today comes from Jeremiah chapter 51, verses 11 through 14. Make the arrows bright, gather the shields. The Lord has raised up the spirit of the kings of the Medes, for his plan is against Babylon to destroy it, because it is the vengeance of the Lord, the vengeance for his temple. Set up the standard on the walls of Babylon, make the guards strong, set up the watchmen, prepare the ambushes, for the Lord has both devised and done what he spoke against the inhabitants of Babylon. O you who dwell by many waters, abundant in treasures, your end has come, the measure of your covetousness. The Lord of hosts has sworn by himself, surely I will fill you with men as with locusts, and they shall lift up a shout against you. So in verses 11 to 14, God calls forth the Medes and the Persians to come and destroy Babylon. But why destroy Babylon? Our passage gives us two lines. One is found in verse 11. This is the Lord's vengeance. It is his vengeance for the temple. Remember how when Babylon invaded, they took away the gold, all the utensils and stuff associated with the temple. That's getting over into the worship spot. That's, I think, somewhere they weren't supposed to go. But verse 13 has the larger clue. Babylon is abundant in treasures and uh, quite interesting here, the measure of your covetousness. All of her treasures that she had acquired were the measure of her covetousness. So look at Babylon. Babylon is covetous. See covetousness worked out to the maximum. She wants to control wealth, so she invades nations and takes it. At one time, the king of Israel showed the envoys from Babylon his treasures, and you know, they made notes about that and took the notes back to Babylon and Babylon said, you know, we're going to get all that stuff, and they did. And Babylon also wants to control physical space, so she invades this land and that land over and over again. That's what she wants. Babylon wants to control a large space of land and territory. But even that is not enough. When God gives the king of Babylon a dream, he sees an image with a head of gold and then a chest of silver and then bronze, you know, each going down the body, each part was less. And he explained to him that, First, your kingdom is a kingdom of gold, and then an inferior kingdom to yours, a kingdom of silver, and there's going to be different kingdoms down through this space of time. But the king of Babylon wasn't satisfied with that. He didn't plan for Babylon to be, you know, an important blip on the screen and then disappears off. So he made a giant image that was made entirely of gold because his image was, we are going to last forever. And so Babylon also wants to control time. But Babylon's covetousness shoots even higher because... Babylon ultimately wants to control worship. And so, of course, when you go to Daniel chapter 3, you have the, this image that was set up. And what were people supposed to do at that time? When the signal came, all these leaders were supposed to bow down before the image. It's a, it's a preview, Revelation 13 preview over there in Daniel chapter 3. Take a look at it. The point here is that Babylon wants to control wealth, wants to control territory, wants to control time itself, and even beyond that, wants to control our worship. Babylon is kind of that perfect picture of ultimate covetousness. And in that sense, God is going to bring an end to that. That isn't compatible with living in an unselfish universe. So that's the measure of Babylon's covetousness. Babylon wants to control worship. Babylon wants to replace God's kingdom with an entirely human kingdom. But remember back in that vision in Daniel 2 at the end, all the human kingdoms come crashing down when God's kingdom utterly replaces them all. So can't work it out, can't have a little bit of this and a little bit of that. It's, it's all unselfishness or it's all selfishness, and there really isn't any in between. Hey, let's pray. Father in heaven, we want to be right. Covetousness is appalling in your sight. Oh, Lord, lead me, lead us, each of us, away from covetousness. Help us, Lord, to be in on the plan of love and giving rather than just gobbling it up and receiving. Thank you for hearing our prayers, Lord. We ask for these Help in our character change, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. So, Babylon stood for eternal consumption, and that's what's wrong with it. It takes, it does not give, it is black to God's white, it's opposite, see? It represents the x-ray image, the reverse of God's ways, the reverse of God's principles. God be with you today as you live his principles and not the principles of Babylon.